Hi, today I just like to sit back and review a few videos on YouTube sent by you guys over time while drinking a cup of tea. Let's watch the first one. What is HDR? This right here is a hyperdimensional resonator. Now many of you have talked about the fact that my nails are long. Well, guess what? I believe that the HDR not only affects time, but it also affects living organisms. I believe this might be a side... So he's claiming that his device affects the speed of time for whatever comes close to it? See, this is a nail clipper. I clip my nails, but they grow very quickly. And... <laughs> Look, a nail clipper. He has one, which means his nails must be growing faster than everyone else. Science! It's out a powerful signal. What is that giant deal? Oh, family friendly. We get these time distortions. Is I'm going to turn the HDR on and see if it makes this watch go fast. <laughs> oh look, that thing vibrates too. Glorious. Oh. It's important to understand that it's an unstable time field. Sometimes it'll go backwards, sometimes it'll go forward. It depends. What? What did I just watch? Did the guy really think that his giant dilemma can actually change time back and forth because his watch jumps around? Kids, you must start learning things, otherwise you'll end up like him. That's why this video is sponsored by... Can you guess? Skillshare, where people like you and me with practical knowledge share their skills and knowledge. Well, less like me, I guess. Teaching design and business and more. Now with over 25,000 classes for less than $10 a month, you can start learning the new skill you always wanted, like... How to use psychology to create better Facebook ads? Isn't it just the art of clickbait? <laughs> I should watch it. The first 500 people to register from the link below get two months of free Skillshare Premium. Back to the Time Warper clown, he's just a giant idiot or troll. Warping time is possible of course, if you have a black hole close by. The giant taped up manhood is likely a large electromagnet from how it sounds. And everyone knows that strong magnets mess with mechanical watches. See in old watches that use gears and springs, when you bring a magnet close, it magnetizes its parts and they get Get stuck together and won't move. In the new clocks or watches that sometimes use plastic gears, there is also a tiny electric motor. So when you bring a magnet close, it messes with the motor fields. With a DC magnet like this, the clock just stops. But with the AC fields his giant Dickinson creates, the motor would run back and forth fast. Why would someone conclude that the actual passage of time is affected? Some people are cancer. Let's just watch the next one. Oh, I need caption for this one. When in the case here, the bush of the month expelled top rat? I listened to the potential? Hmm, <laughs> it translated the sound of the arcs. Out of the potential enters the potential. <laughs> Why does this guy have this giant transformer in his backyard? And I don't. Well, thank you, Auto Translate. Okay, so he's making 13.8 kilovolts with his transformer. Then he stands up on those to isolate himself from ground and touches the output with a metal rod and some arcs jump to his body and then he grabs it too. If he was standing on the ground he would be dead in a microsecond. Or is he? Because later he shows that he is passing the huge current through his body. If this is what he's trying to imply that the current runs through his body, he's a f moron. You should never imply that something little is potentially harmless. People would try it and poof, survivor of the smartest. Let me demonstrate and don't repeat this yourself. I don't want to walk in your neighborhood and be like, whatever they are cooking is burning. My transformer creates 2000 volts, not as high as that guy. Now I am sitting on a plastic chair isolated from everywhere and want to touch the output. You can see these tiny arcs jumping to my body, which means the current is flowing, although the circuit is open. The reason is that my conductive body surface creates a capacitance to the environment and lets the AC through. But the capacity is very small and so very little current passes through my body that I don't feel. Although you see the tiny arcs. That's what this guy is doing. If he was standing on ground, he would be electrocuted. Now I'm holding two pieces of metal in my hand. I connect one of them to the ground and the other one to the 2 kV output. Very dangerous and I must get electrocuted. But I don't. <laughs> I must possess some kind of super... No! 
I'm just connecting the two pieces of metal with wire. This is a very dangerous trick this guy is pulling. I mean, what if the wire accidentally disconnects? The entire current runs through your body and poof! See, after the first trick, he goes inside to prepare. And right here, you see he's pulling his sleeves down. Then he comes out with two rods in his hands with the wire running through his sleeves. And right here, he doesn't even bother to hide the wire. See? The wire is right there connected to the rods. Okay, let's watch the next video. Jose's fear of commitment has led him to dedicate his life to electricity. <laughs> well, just to be clear, that's not the reason why people study electricity. It's very dangerous and I don't know if maybe he's used it because he has done it many times and he has become used to it stop, step by step or if it is a special case or... No, you never get used to electricity. If enough current passes through your body, you'll die no matter how many times you have zapped yourself before. At the university, Jose starts by setting up his equipment. Professor Hector Jimenez has gathered some of the best physics experts from the university in the hope of understanding Jose's claims. Attached to the mains, Jose burns paper with his finger. He's not attached to the mains, he's attached to the setup he just put together. The scientists fear they might get electrocuted and back away. <laughs> By experimenting, he obviously has found uh, conditions that allow him to, to do what, what he... Well, obviously he knows electronics he better than these guys. But not, not kill him. I'm not sure why that is. Yep. Professor Jimenez feels they don't have equipment capable of measuring the potentially high current flowing into Jose's body. All they needed to measure the current through his body was a shunt. This magic mongoose is obviously using a high frequency voltage because of the form of the arcs and the fact that they are not making any humming sound. First of all, I showed in my video a while back that you only feel the electric pain up to a certain frequency, as clearly seen in my Mehdi graph of PVF. And he's using a frequency much more than that. Now I have mentioned skin effect before, that at high frequencies the current runs through the outer shell of a conductor. But then later I realized that it's incorrect to assume it helps in human body because human body is high resistance and the skin effect is quite deep but still the frequency is just high enough that he doesn't feel it because it doesn't mess with the nerves anymore see there are two ways that electricity hurts one is by messing with your nerves and stopping your muscles and the other one is by heating up and burning the tissues anyone can do what it does although i don't recommend it at all because it can also cook meat so just watch me do it this is my Tesla coil that can generate 1 MHz of high voltage and if I bring my hand close ow, I don't feel any electric shock, I just feel skin burn ow. Here, now I don't feel anything Now let me try and measure the current through my body I will measure the voltage across a 1 ohm resistor so every volt is an amp series with my body connected to the ground using a differential probe okay now there is a bunch of switching noise you can ignore here and this is supposed to show the rms current which is really zero at this level and i hold the resistor and there is not much current through my body and i bring my other hand close to the tower and it's ow sh it seems I've passed over 100 milliamps through my body that heated up and burnt my skin. This is considered a lethal amount at low frequencies, but I don't feel it inside my body. It will eventually heat up the path it's passing through my body, so it's not good. I can even make a light bulb glow with the current through my body. These things are possible at high frequency, but they still can burn and be harmful. Okay, who's next? Okay, what is this? Guys, cutting a can of coke? Okay, what is this? Oh, he put it on the router antenna. Oh my God, ah, those stupid fake Facebook DIY videos. People watch it and say, hey, it works because it looks like a dish antenna. Don't you think if those router manufacturers could so easily increase their range, they would be all over it? Even if it could reflect anything, it would be very directional. Dish antennas transmit most of their power sharply at the front, unlike the monopole antennas of the router that transmit uniformly around it, because the receiver can be anywhere. So that's true, you can get a much longer range if you sit right in front of a proper dish antenna, but no reception if you're not in front of it even close by. Garbage! And one day you visit your grandma and realize she has a cut coke can on her router and says, it works much better since I added this. 
No, grandma, that's not how it works. And then there is this guy in his fancy pants showing that passing water through a bunch of coils, you can generate static electricity. <laughs> Who does he think he is? Derek from Veritasium? Oh wait, he is Derek from Veritasium. Then this is a legitimate video, go watch it. All the links are in the description. These are the people you should be watching. Derek has a PhD in physics education. There is an army of people like him on the internet who do great work. Mark Rober has a master's in mechanical science and has worked for NASA. Kurzgesagt is a team of researchers, the same as ASAP Science, Seeker or SciShow. Trace Dominguez, who recently, after working for Seeker, started his own science channel from scratch. It would give you a decent little shock. I mean, it's not actually dangerous because although the voltage is high, there's not that much charge behind it. So you can't get that much current flowing and current is what really does damage. Even the best of us make mistakes, me included. What he meant to say was that it doesn't hurt because the energy is limited. The voltage is very high as well as current, but the time is very short in order of nanoseconds, so very little energy. There is also this suspicious Middle Eastern brown guy from Electro Boom. You might want to subscribe to him too, he has a master's in failure. And also there are tons of more people at Skillshare, an online learning community where you can fill your brains with the juice of science. Especially with my promo link, you get 2 months of free premium membership with unlimited access. Sorry, last time my family used it up so quickly, so here's the new link. Only the first 500 people to register get it, so good luck penetrating the competition. Skillshare has over 7 million members learning stuff, especially the creative lessons that I like. Last time I took a few lessons on Adobe Premiere. Also, I always wanted to start programming Arduino, but was afraid it might be too complex. But then I took a few lessons and realized it's nothing. So if I can pull my act together, you might see some controller programming in my future. 